It is good to look out and see all of you. I'm glad that you made it to church today. It has gotten colder out, that's for sure. Anybody experience the cold? Yeah, there was snowflakes flying this week. It's crazy. It's crazy. Hey, um, I'm going to get into the message in just a moment. I just want to say thank you for being a church that is an amazing church who loves and gives and serves uh, so well. I, I look at shoe boxes across the front here, and what you don't see, partly we started a second row back here and like a third row over here. Um, that doesn't mean we've got second row going all, it was just, there's more boxes to come. I think at best estimate at the beginning of the day, we had about 350. So our goal is 1500. Uh, whether we make it there or not, I mean, this is just, a, it's just a display of what amazing uh, people you are to give and to uh, want to take the message every way that we can uh, around the globe. And so um, if you got shoe boxes, just bring them in. This is kind of, it's kind of worship. We're going to pray over these next week. So this is the week to get them in. If you took shoe boxes and you intended to make uh, some shoe boxes up to uh, send it into uh, Operation Christmas Child, there is still time. You've got a week. Even if next Sunday you got here and said, you know what, I can do more, um, there will be time. But it's going to be cutting, cutting, cutting it pretty close. Um, so if you uh, can serve, help in that way, there are, I'm sure there are slots open to, to help and serve uh, for, for the collection part of it. We're, uh, we're excited for that. And let me just say, there's a, there's a lot of uh, sickness and a lot of people who have been sick for a variety of reasons, several people who have been sick with COVID. And uh, we just want you to know, and if you're watching today in your home because you're sick, we're praying for you. Uh, we know who some of you are, but if you, if you listen, Moving forward, if you have symptoms or you find out that you test positive, or will you let us know so that we can pray? We're not going to post that anywhere, but you know, as a pastoral staff, we we commit to praying for people and we want to help any way that we can. Um, and I know it's a difficult process for some people. Some people just sail, sail through it pretty smoothly, but let us know so that we can pray for you. That would be that would be awesome. So we continue in our series uh, on spiritual warfare today, and the title for this message is the battle, winning the battle for the mind. And I've got to tell you that this week has been really a challenge. Um, I, I've, lived, I've lived the spiritual warfare this week. I don't know if you've ever had those times or those days, uh, those weeks, where it just feels like every, everything that you do, you're two steps behind. I find myself waking up and feeling like my, my wheels are spinning on ice and I can't go anywhere. It, it just has been a battle. One, it's been a busy week, but, but just finding time. And I know this message that I'm, that I'm preaching today is winning the battle for the mind. And honestly, I felt like I was in this mind game battle all week with the devil. And it's like, how can I not like get some traction? And it's like every time I'd carve out some time, something would happen, something would come up or, or like yesterday morning, I got up early. I got up early and I was going to come quiet before anybody shows up, you know, around the facilities here and do some studying early in the morning. I love that. This is the best time for me. I get, I get up early, I go to my car and my battery's dead. It's like, oh, great. Okay. Well. My car is parked next to Jeannie's car. I'll just go in the garage and get my, well, I thought they were in my car. Got in my car. They're not in my car. I go in the garage, snooping around the garage. I get the keys to Jeannie's car. Maybe they're in her car. I can't find my jumper cables anywhere. So I've spent a half an hour looking for cables, like er, so early in the morning, like nobody's awake yet. And I'm having this battle and this struggle. I'm thinking, okay, I'm losing precious time here. I just took her car. But I knew that she was going to be leaving early in the morning. So I took her car and I sent her a text to say, hey, I just want you to know my, my car won't start. I've got your car. I'll be home. She had to go, go to the, um, watch the grandkids because of youth convention this weekend. So anyway, she, she texts me at 630 and says, where's my car? As she's seeing the message. So then, you know, it's like, then I have to go get her, um, Go get some jumper cables from Zach and Marin. I mean, it's like I'm doing all this stuff and I'm like, I didn't plan any of this stuff. And it's just like eating things away in my day. And so I struggle, struggle, struggle. And all through the day yesterday, 
After I got, I got a new battery for my car. I, I don't know why I'm telling you all this stuff. This is, this is extra <laughs> wasted information, but I'm already there. So I had to go get a battery for my car. Worked out pretty good. I went to the battery store, um, went in, and fig figured out which battery I needed. I brought all the tools with me. I just took the battery out in the parking lot, took the old one in, got the new one, put it, put it in the car. I've, I, first time I've had a car that has all the extra stuff on it, you know, it's an older car, it's a 2013, but I put the battery in, started up, nothing works. It needs a code. So I call Honda. Hey, is there any way I can find a, a code? I've got a 2013 uh, Honda Pilot. Oh, sure, we can get a code. I was on the phone for like 20 minutes with them, and finally she said, why don't you, can you just bring it by? I said, oh, sure, I'll just bring it by. So I go over to Honda thinking that'll be, I was at Honda for an hour, and guess what? No code. They, didn't, they couldn't find it. Everything they were pulling up was like a, like a different car, like all the information. It's like, so I'm hopefully, hopefully getting a call tomorrow, but none of, my, none of my instruments, I mean, the speedometer works. I guess that's the important thing. Um, but nothing else works in my car. So it's just one of those days. And, and so all throughout, even yesterday, it's getting to the end of the, you know, it's like time is running out, and I, I got to preach in the morning. And I, I, I worked and worked. It just seemed like, you know, I would get two hours and I would never quite, it's like my, my brain was just, it's like I could tell, I just can't focus. Why can't I focus? And I'm, and I'm telling myself yesterday, I'm living this out. I'm living what I'm preaching. I have to tell everybody what, what a struggle and a battle this has been, but I determined, this is what I said. I said, God, I'm gonna stay here and I'm gonna study as long as it takes if I stay here all night because I need a word to say tomorrow and I have this opportunity to speak on the winning the battle for our minds, spiritual warfare. I gotta have something, something that makes sense, something that can be life-changing, something that can be life-giving. And I just decided I'm sticking it out till I know I've got something. And honestly, I got tired and at 12.30 I went home and so what looked at like on the page like I'm, I'm thinking I have read and read and studied and things just didn't go on the page today I have about 10 pages of notes I've got plenty of stuff but I won't get to half of it but how many of you are ready okay here you go thanks for those who are joining online sorry about the car story One thing that we understand and we see when we talk about spiritual warfare is that there is more to life than what we see. Beyond the physical senses, there is a world, a very real world that is unseen. This is what, this is what Paul said in Ephesians, put on God's armor so that you will be able to stand firm against all the strategies of the devil. For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world against mighty powers in this dark world, against evil spirits in the heavenly places. Listen, our battle is not with people. Your battle is not with your spouse. It's not with your children. It's not with your neighbor, your coworkers, or your boss. This is a spiritual battle that we are fighting and facing every day of our life. As followers of Jesus, we have to understand that we're engaged in this battle, this spiritual battle. We have a very real enemy, but we have been issued equipment Weapons to fight with. God has given us spiritual armor. And with it, we can defeat the enemy because this is the armor of God. And I don't know if you've reminded yourself of this, but he has never lost a battle. Amen. He has not ever lost a battle that he is engaged. This is Jesus who never fails. Paul said this in Romans 8, 37. We are more than conquerors. We are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. Overwhelming victory is ours through Christ Jesus who loved us. Here's what we know is that Satan is defeated. He's already defeated. As a follower of Christ, Satan has no authority. He has no power in or over your life. That doesn't mean that we don't or won't engage in battle and struggles because the Bible teaches us that life here on this earth is more like a battleground than a playground. And I think a lot of people live life like it's a playground. We're just kind of doing our own thing, having fun over here, doing this over here, you know, whatever. The reality is, is we're in a battle. Whether you're having fun or not, there's still a battle that is raging. We have a very real enemy who is out to steal, kill, and destroy us. We live in a world that has gone wild. The enemy is, 
using whatever, whoever he can to distract, to discourage, to divide, and to destroy us. The battle that is being waged against us is primarily right here in our minds. What we're going to talk about today is everything that, that's going on is happening right here in our minds. It's true that whatever or whoever controls your thinking, your philosophy, ultimately your mind is in control of your life. And the Bible teaches us that spiritual warfare, in spiritual warfare, we take captive every thought. Scripture tells us that we demolish arguments, speculations, imaginations, human reasoning that keeps people from knowing God. This is what Paul said in 2 Corinthians 10, 3 to 5. Though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. The weapons that we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God, and we take captive every thought and make it obedient to Christ. Listen, we are the gatekeepers. We are the gatekeepers of our minds. Satan may throw a thought at us, that's contrary to God's word, and he's trying to hold us captive uh, with those thoughts. And we have to choose whether or not we're gonna think those thoughts or take them captive. We're the gatekeeper of everything that goes into our mind, into our hearts, into our spirits. Whatever goes in your eyes, whatever goes in your ears, through any of your five senses, smell, taste, touch, all those kind of things, the enemy will do whatever he can to get into our lives, and we have to realize that we're the gatekeeper that is saying, no, you don't. That's as far as you go. First thought that I want to share with you this morning is, is this, to challenge your thoughts. Have you ever slowed down long enough to pay attention to what's going on in your mind? What are you hearing? What are you thinking? What are you believing? We're constantly being inundated by evil, godless ideas, worldviews, and philosophies. And our hearts and minds are being overwhelmed with lies and deceit from the world, from our own flesh, and especially from the devil. Paul said this in Colossians 2.8, don't let anyone capture you with empty philosophies and high-sounding nonsense that come from human thinking and from the spiritual powers of this world rather than from Christ. Listen to that again. Don't let anyone capture you with empty philosophies and high-sounding nonsense. There's a lot of that going on in the world today. I can attach that label to a lot of stuff going on in the world today that come from human thinking and from the spiritual powers of this world rather than from Christ. Paul said we demolish arguments, every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God and we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. So we're talking not just about our own thoughts, but we're talking about the thoughts that are pervading our world today. The systems of thinking, the, the, the philosophies, all those things that are going on in our world today. If we're going to take something captive, listen, if we're going to take something captive, we take control of it. If we're going to take control of something, then we've got to put it in a restricted environment like a wild animal in a cage. That's what Paul's saying that we do with, with, with our thoughts. We take captive our thoughts, make them obedient to Christ. He talks a lot about things that we do. We demolish arguments. We uh, uh, take captive our thoughts. We tear down strongholds. All of those kind of things. So what is a stronghold? Listen, here's here's how I'm going to define this. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 27 says, do not give the devil a foothold. Don't give the devil a foothold. Other versions say, don't make room for the devil. Don't give him an opportunity or even a place. Listen, I said this a couple of weeks ago. If you give Satan an inch... What? He's going to take a mile, whatever, and, and probably more than that. This is what, this is what the scripture tells us. Don't, don't give him a foothold. Don't even open the door. Because as soon as you crack that door, he's got a foot in the door. And once you open a door, it is really hard to close it. Satan gets a foothold, which ultimately becomes a stronghold. A stronghold is fashioned when you're deceived about who God really is. Is God really for you? Maybe you're thinking that. Or is he against you? Listen, he will do whatever he can to get a foothold in your life and cause you to doubt, cause you to disbelieve, 
All of those types of things. A stronghold can be a number of things, a pattern of thinking, an obsession. Maybe you're thinking, why can't I stop thinking this way? Why does my mind always take me there? It's something that your head can't put away. It's an obsession. That's, that can be a stronghold. A stronghold can be a phobia or a fear. It can be a, an anxiety or a compulsion to do things that you don't want to do. Listen, your brain, your brain is much like a computer. I would say that a computer is like your brain. But we can't, we can't even match the human brain. All of the, the nerve endings and the synapses and all of the different things that connect your brain to work how it is. But listen, your brain, like a computer, a computer has hard drives and, and um, um, oh, whatever else it has. <laughs> a lot of wires and a lot of stuff. But here's what I know about that computer. It does not work without software without an operating system. You can have a computer, but if you don't have software, it's worth nothing. Listen, our brain does a lot of different things for us. Listen, listen to what the, brain, what the brain does for us. The human brain, made of approximately 100 billion neurons, 100 billion, the same number of stars that exist in our galaxy. The human brain monitors and regulates the body's actions and reactions with over five trillion chemical operations occurring every second. That's pretty phenomenal. And signals being transferred at speeds of over 260 miles per hour. Our brain is rapidly analyzing and responding to all the sights, the sounds, the smells around us. So when you smell something like lunch and you, you can identify, you think about all the things that happen just to get you to that place. It's amazing what our brain can do, but our brains and our minds are something different. Just like a computer needs software, our brain connects with our mind and our mind, listen, just like you need software downloaded to your computer, you need software downloaded into you because that's the operating system with which you do things in the world, how you operate in this world. Pastor Austin shared a message several years ago talking about um, addictions and how addictions can uh, cause neural pathways in your brain. So whenever you are, are doing some kind of an activity or, or carrying out a thought or an idea, what you're doing is like forging some territory through your brain. Much like if you were in a, a, a field of tall grass and you, and you take a path through that grass heading to somewhere out in the, out in the distance. If, you've, if you know what I'm talking about, you can see where an animal or where a person has forged their way through that grass because there's little bent pieces of grass and you can kind of see somebody, somebody went through there. But you go, you go back through there and through there again and pretty soon you start trampling a path. And that's what happens in your brain. We get these neural pathways in our brain that makes it easier. We've got an idea, a thought, something that we've not done before, something that we normally wouldn't do, um, some kind of a, a thing, and it becomes an addiction. And what we're doing is creating these neural pathways in our brain, and it trains our brain to want to do more of that. And pretty soon we don't just have a path, we've got a highway. Listen, I want to tell you that if you are struggling with a stronghold, some kind of an addiction or something in your life where you've got that pathway forged in your brain, that is not impossible to undo. Amen. The world will tell you that it's, listen, if I'm, if I'm walking in the snow in the wintertime and I'm making my way from here to there, I'm, you know, through the knee deep snow, I'm having to pick my feet up, take steps. I mean, it's not easy. How many of you know what I'm talking about to do that? But if I go back through that, I put my foot back in the same spots where I walked the first time, it's a little bit easier. And every time I go through there, it tramples down the snow a little bit more and, and it creates a path. And I, now I can come and go as I want to. I don't even have to think about it anymore. That's how our brain works. But listen, I'm, I'm here to say that you can untrain your brain with God's help to, to have victory over that. And today, this is the whole idea. God wants to set us free. God wants to give us victory over the things in our lives that the enemy has put in our lives and now has a stronghold in our life. And they ha there's, a, there's quite a bit of strongholds that people deal with. I had already gone through phobias, fears, anxieties, compulsions to do things. In the realm of emotions, there's bitterness. Bitterness can be a strong bondage in a person's life. Some of you might be dealing with bitterness, anger, lust. We're not talking about just passing thoughts. A lot of us may have a thought. All of us, all of us have thoughts. You know what I'm talking about. The thought comes and you go, whoa, where did that come from? And what do we do? We learn, to, we learn to pass it off. We take captive the thought, make it obedient to Christ. So the thought comes in, we don't have to dwell on it. 
We learn how to take care of that, make it obedient to Christ. I don't think, I don't think about those things. I'm not going to continue to think about that, that woman's body that I saw or whatever it might be. You learn to let go of that, take that captive. Um, but the enemy works that way. So he gives us these thoughts. He doesn't know what we're thinking, but he knows how we think. He's been doing this long enough that he understands people and he knows your struggle. He can watch and see what's going on. So we're not talking about that everyday kind of passing thoughts, but controlling, captivating ideas and imaginations that we know don't come from God. Rather than those lofty opinions raised against the knowledge of God. So it can happen in a believer's life. We start listening to the world instead of listening to the word. We don't listen to the signals that come from God, but we're getting signals from Satan himself. He deceives and he distorts the truth, and we start believing a lie, and next thing you know, we start living that lie. Some of us may be caught in one of those strongholds, an addiction of some kind. You don't know how to get out. You don't know how to break the habits. Drug and alcohol can be bondages. Listen, pornography and sexual sins can be a bondage, a stronghold. And if statistics, if statistics prove out here, the majority of you sitting here right now are dealing with pornography. That's a sobering thought. It reminds me today that we need victory, the victory that comes from, from Christ through his spirit in our lives. We can have victory and freedom over those bondages and those strongholds in our life. And I'm, we're going to pray for those at the end. Gambling, whatever it might be. Paul said in Romans 6, 12, don't let sin control the way that you live. Don't give in to sinful thoughts. Listen, it all starts with a thought. And that thought comes from something that you see or something that you hear. Pastor Weaver teaches our fifth graders, a thought leads to an action. An action leads to a habit. A habit leads to a lifestyle. That's how it works. And it all started with a thought that started from something that you saw or something that you heard. That's how it works. So we need to take a close look at what we're thinking or what we're believing and why we're believing that. Do our thoughts line up with what we know is true about Jesus, about our life, our new life found in him? Do our thoughts conform to the truths of the gospel? Listen, we're the gatekeepers. We control that. We have the opportunity to, to change those things. The second point that I wanna share with you this morning is be transformed. Paul says this in Romans chapter 12. He says, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living, a, a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Don't conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. I like how the New Living Translation says it. It says this, don't copy the behaviors and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way that you think. That's what we're talking about, our thoughts. Our mind is a battleground for the enemy and it starts with thoughts. What are we gonna do with our thoughts? Paul says, don't conform to the pattern, the ways of the thinking of the world that we live in. The systems of thought that are going on in our world today. Listen, we're being conditioned and trained all the time. What are we listening to? If we're listening to the news and we're not opening the word of God. Are we opening the word of God and are we studying the Bible for ourselves? Is this part of your routine? Are you turning on the TV to watch CNN or Fox News? Listen to me. They're not going to tell you the whole truth. Whatever news program you're watching, you're not going to get the whole truth. I promise you. But you're going to get the truth here. The whole truth and nothing but the truth. It's true. But if we're listening to, to the news, we're listening to the things of the culture, but we're not in the word, guess what, guess what our minds are being programmed to, to, to believe? I'm telling you. The enemy is sneaky, he's conniving, and he's going to do whatever he can to get a foothold. Start changing our thinking, start changing what we believe. Don't copy the, the behavior and customs of this world. Let God transform you into a new person by changing the way that you think. Be transformed by the renewing of your minds. 
Paul says this in Ephesians 4.22, throw off your old sinful nature, your former way of life, which is corrupted by lust and deception. Instead, let the Spirit renew your thoughts and your attitudes. Put on your new nature to be created like God, truly righteous and holy. Put off the old and put on the new. Not, we're not to be conformed to this world. By world, Paul is talking about the spirit of the age, like I'm saying, the popular worldview that rejects God and his revelation. Listen, what do you think our kids in school are being taught in public school? I believe that there are godly Christian teachers in our schools. But listen, I'm not, I'm not bashing public school. I'm just saying as parents and as grandparents, we have a responsibility to teach them the whole truth. What they're getting at school is not truth. Maybe some truth, some part truth. But listen, we have got to educate our children and our grandchildren. We've got to download the software into our kids so they know what truly to believe because there's a battle out there and it's for their minds. Go back to Nazi Germany. Where did it start? How did they infiltrate and how did they change the way of thinking? Through the children. And everybody else just is amazing. Like within a few months, they all started taking the, taking the Ten Commandments off of the wall in the churches and putting a picture of Hitler. How does that happen? Our thinking, how do we get there? People naturally conform to the world. It's our nature. We don't conform any longer to this world because we don't belong to this world. We're not part of the, 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 the spirit of this age. Paul said in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, if anyone is in Christ, they're a new cre creation. The old is gone and the new has come. Listen, the gospel is a call to repentance. The gospel message is for the unbeliever to repent, to throw off the old and put on the new. The Greek word for, for repentance is metanoia, which means, listen to this, a reorientation, a change of our mind, a fundamental transformation of your outlook on life. That's what repentance means. From the ungodly old ways of thinking to the new godly ways of thinking. Transformation, we're talking about um, getting into the word, doing personal study. Are you doing that? Is there time in your day, every day, where you open the word? Are you in a group? Are you in a class? Listen, we have all these things happening here at church. And I promise you, I absolutely, 100%, totally promise you that you're not going to get what you need coming to a Sunday service one hour a week. You need to be in the word. You need to encourage other people. You need to be encouraged by other people. So get into a group. We've got Sunday school. We've got Wednesday night classes. I teach a class on Wednesday night. It's a phenomenal class. Not because I'm the teacher. We've got great people that come there. We've had some great discussions. But listen, I'm telling you, there are a lot of great classes and we need to be engaged in our faith because if all we're getting is an hour download once a week, it doesn't compete with what the world's got going on. Because if you watch an hour of a TV show, I promise you it's not the most wholesome, healthy thing to watch. We're the gatekeeper. We need to guard what goes in our lives. It's time to get serious, to make a commitment that you're going to be here. You're going to be in church. Thank you. I look out and see all of you. I know that there are many people who are joining us online today, and you're there because you can't be here. Understand that. I know you'd want to be here. But listen, Hebrews 10.25 says, let us not neglect our meeting together, but encourage one another, especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. It's time for us to get serious, to make a commitment that you're going to be here consistently, consistently hearing the word, encouraging others, like iron sharpens iron. 2 Corinthians 3.18 says, whenever someone turns to the Lord, a veil is taken away. So all of us who have had that veil removed can see and reflect the glory of the Lord. The Lord, who is the Spirit, makes us more and more like him as we are changed into his glorious image. How we change is face-to-face -face with the Lord Jesus Christ, face-to-face -face with his word. That's how we change. We become more like him by being in his presence. We become more like him by reading and studying his word. We become more like him by encouraging one another toward the things of God. I have to have that. You need that. All of us need that. And as we see the day of the Lord's return approaching, we need more and more to encourage one another with those things. Listen, we can't afford to, to skimp here. It's not like it's a huge commitment. Come on, come on Sunday. Be in a class. 
Maybe come on Wednesday, be part of a class, be in a small group some night during the week, whatever it might be, some place where you're getting more input, more encouragement. That's what the church is all about. We're to come together and encourage one another. The third point that I want to talk about is consider the fruit. Paul, Paul describes fruit of the Spirit as this. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Nine-dimensional aspect that, that, that looks and resembles like Jesus. That's who he is. That's the fruit of his life. He goes on to, he talks about the works of the flesh, on the other hand, that produces a life contrary to Jesus' example. And this is that list. Sexual immorality, impurity, and debauchery. Idolatry and witchcraft. Hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. He's saying other sins like these. And I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. So if the fruit of our life looks like any of those things, that is not good. How do we counteract that? With the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit comes not because we try so hard to be be loving. It comes because we have engaged our life with with Jesus Christ himself. We've engaged with his word. We've engaged with with conversations with others who, who are encouraging us. One of the ways that we fight the war of the mind is considering the fruit that we are exhibiting. What are we exhibiting in our life? Take an honest evaluation. If your life isn't resembling the fruits of the Spirit or the example of Jesus, then it's time to repent. It's time to change our thinking, change our behavior. Behavior doesn't happen without a change of thinking. The last point is this, the battle for our mind. Philippians chapter four, Paul says rejoice in the Lord always. This is how we win the battle for the mind. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all the Lord is near. The Lord is near. How many of you know that the Lord is near? Do we live our lives like God is very near to us? How often do we think about God in our day? In our activities and the things that we do, are we considering the fact that he's right there with us? In my struggle and my battle this week, listen, there were plenty of times where I'm going, I don't know what's going on here. Why won't my mind engage? Why can't I get things down on paper? Why is this such a struggle? And my mind can go, God, where are you? But my mind is telling me, I know that you're right here with me. I know that you're for me. I know that you're working things together in my life for good. I don't see it right now. I don't feel it right now. But this is what I told God. I'm sticking with this until I get something. Because I know that you're here. And I know that you'll come through. And I know that there's something that you're going to give me to give the people today that's life-giving and life-changing. And I want to see lives changed. I want to see people brought to the, the closeness and nearness of a relationship with Jesus to be completely transformed. I'm sick and tired of seeing Christians conforming to the ways of the world. More and more we become more like what's going on in the world. Stop conforming, being pushed into a mold by the world. Be transformed. By the renewing of your mind, change the way that you think. Don't be anxious about anything, Paul says, but in every situation, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. Don't Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, anything that is excellent or praiseworthy, think about those things. Think about those things. Listen, we need to be spiritually minded in our our mind, our our. our, Our brain, our mind is the most vulnerable organ that we have. It's where the enemy attacks. We need this principle of replacement. Paul says, don't become, uh, don't be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. What are you thinking about? He gives us a list. All these things that we should be thinking about. This is what the Bible tells us more and more. I'm gonna ask the worship team to come. Listen to these scriptures. Hebrews 3, 1, fix your thoughts on Jesus. Hebrews 12, 2, let's fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. Isaiah 26, 3, you will keep in perfect peace all who trust in you, all whose thoughts are fixed on you. Where should our eyes and our minds be fixed? On Jesus. 
Is that you? Is that where you're at? Be still and know that I am God, the psalmist says. Paul says, one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize. That's what I'm all about. I realize I'm engaged in a battle and I'm in it to win it. I need God's help. Every day I need God's help. I'm gonna ask you to stand with me if you will. We got to the point where I'm just out of time. I got more notes. <laughs> but we're, we're, we're gonna stop right there. Here's the deal. God wants to meet us here and he wants to change our lives. Every single one of us. You're here for a reason. You're here because you claim Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. You're part of a church. You're part of the kingdom of God. You're part of the body of God. But we still struggle. I am, I am out of my mind to think that you're not struggling with some, some stronghold in your life. To think that there's not some thing that you're battling in your life. Some thought process. Some habit. An addiction. Listen, statistics say like 60, 80% of you have a problem with pornography. I remember when I was younger, pornography, you had to go to a particular store. And then a little bit later, it was like go to a convenience store and they had them behind the counter and there was always a board in front of it so you could, you could see the title but you couldn't see anything on it. Remember those days? How many of you remember that? Listen, and I got internet for the first time in my house. 1996, 7.2K dial-up. All of a sudden I realized my home is connected to the world. And somewhere not long after that, the thought came, what can come through this line into my house? You're the gatekeeper. You're the gatekeeper for your own mind in your own heart. Parents, grandparents, you're the gatekeeper for your children. You're teaching them, equipping them, you're helping them, you're responsible to them, you're responsible for them. We need to win this battle. God's not willing that any, any of us perish. I'm not willing that any of you perish either. We need to win this battle. How many of you are with me? So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna end by just a response and I'm gonna ask you to come. If you've got an addiction of some kind, a stronghold in your life, listen, your stronghold might just be you're, you're anxious about things. Your stronghold might be you worry about things. Your stronghold might be you, just, you gossip with your neighbor. Listen, I don't know what it is. There might be some very deep, hard things. Nobody here is gonna judge you. Listen, we're all on the same team. We're for each other here. If you come down here, nobody's going to think what terrible sin you're doing. Listen, we need to be set free. And here's the deal. You coming here, we often have this idea that we're going to come to be prayed for and it should be taken care of and I should walk away and everything's going to be better. Listen, it doesn't work that way. It can. God certainly works miraculously in people's lives. But we're talking about a transformation. A changing the way that we think choosing what we're going to listen to, choosing what path we're going to take, choosing who we're going to listen to, choosing what we're going to do. And we're saying the process starts today. So whatever it is that you are battling with, please, if you want to be forgiven, you want to find victory, you want to find freedom over that thing so that you can fully live the way God intended you to live, just come down the altar as we sing this song. I'm not going to ask anybody to pray for you. We're just going to come down here and make a commitment. If every one of you responds today, listen, there's plenty of room. There is plenty of room. Don't walk out of this room. You might miss an opportunity to receive victory and freedom through Jesus. Amen? As we'll see. Come. We're talking about being transformed. And the reality is there's some people in the room here you don't even know what it's like to have a relationship or even know that you can overcome these struggles, these addictions, these things that grip you and, and, and hold you down in your, in your life. And the enemy has told you that religion and Christianity and the church will take all your fun away. It's a lie. What the world offers you and what Satan has got going on in your life has meant nothing but to destroy you 
both in this life and eternity to come. And today you realize you need help. You need a life transformation. You need someone to save you out of what you're in. And you need Jesus to pick you up out of the muck and the mire and the junk that you're involved in to give you hope and future. If that's you today and you're here and you need Jesus and you're, and you're giving your life to him, would you just raise your hand? I want to pray for you today across the room if that's you. Anyone else? Just keep your hands raised. Will you just receive that today? Say, Jesus, thank you so much that you love me even when I've been unlovable, even when I've been away from you. You died on a cross. You were buried and you rose again. You're victorious over death in the grave. And you sit in heaven today victorious. And you, and you have made me an overcomer in this life. I choose you, Jesus. Forgive me of my sin and the stuff in my life that sep has separated me from you. I give you my life. I give you my everything. Take my sin. Take my pain, my hurts, my addictions, my challenges, my struggles, and set me free. Forgive me, save me, and heal me. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Jesus. There's several people in this room, and I'm believing that there's several people online today who are responding to that message. Just honesty from everyone else. How many of you would say that there is day-to-day -day struggles in your life? You're not revealing anything, but you're saying, you know what, the battle's real. The struggle is real. Life is not as easy as I'd hope it to be. Listen, someone said, you know, I never really have any struggles with the enemy. I don't think I ever really have any problems. Guess what? Probably because you're going the same way that he is. You're not an enemy to him. Turn around and go the other way. I guarantee you, you're going to see him face to face. So let me encourage you. If you are facing the enemy and it seems like you never get away from him, listen, count it joy. You're probably going the right direction. And with God's help, you're going to make it. It's not about you being good enough. Jesus already did everything that he needs to. It's just you identifying with him and being on his team and saying, Jesus, I'm yours. That's great news. Listen, let's go and fight the battle. Don't give up. Don't quit. Don't sit down. Get in relationship with God. Get in relationship with other people. Get in a group. Get in a class. When this place is open, be here. Build relationships so that you can encourage one another. Be encouraged. That's what we need. That's the church. That's what it's all about, to win this, to win this race. Don't give up. The battle's out there, guys. Stop at a class on your way out if you haven't already gone to one. Find a class before you go. <laughs> Take an extra hour. Find a good place to go. But let's, let's serve God with all of our heart. Amen? Let's be this church. Let's be his people. Let's listen to his voice and him alone. God bless you. We love you guys. Have a, have, a, have a great rest of your day. If you're joining us online, thank you. Love you all. Praying for you. Appreciate you. Let us know if there's anything that we can do for you. God bless you.